In this video we will deal with the design and operation of a resistance thermometer which is used to measure temperatures. So let's get started. In resistance thermometers, also referred to as resistance temperature detectors, the dependence of the electrical resistance on the temperature is used to determine the temperature. Let's take a look at the details. Operating Principle In resistance thermometers, a constant electrical current flows through a conductor which serves as the sensor. The currents are usually less than 1 mA to avoid excessive heating by the current. According to Ohm's law, at a constant current the voltage at the measuring conductor varies depending on the electrical resistance, and thus on the temperature. Using this measured voltage, Ohm's law can therefore be used to calculate the resistance, which is directly a measure of the temperature. The higher the resistance, the higher the temperature. A non-corrosive platinum conductor with a nominal resistance of 100 ohm at a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius is often used as the sensing resistor. These characteristics give this type of resistance thermometer the name PT100. There are also platinum temperature sensors which have a nominal resistance of 500 ohm or 1000 ohm at 0 degrees Celsius. These sensors are referred to as PT500 and PT1000 respectively. In the measuring range between 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius of a PT100, the temperature can be determined as follows using the calculated resistance based on the measured voltage at constant current. Lead Compensation This image shows a PT100 with a terminal head for screwing into a pipe system to monitor the temperature. The principle of determining the temperature is done as just described. A power supply unit is first used to generate a constant current which flows through the PT100. The voltage required for this is set directly on the power supply unit. In this case, the generation of the current and the measurement of the voltage takes place directly at the power supply unit and is indicated on the display. This measuring principle is also referred to as two-terminal sensing since only two measuring leads are sufficient for measurement. In a simplified view, the resistance value of the PT100 can now be calculated from Ohm's law as the quotient of voltage and current. With such a two-wire measurement method, however, it must be kept in mind that the calculated resistance is not only due to the PT100, but in this case is also due to electrical resistances in the measuring leads. So what you actually calculate with Ohm's law is the total resistance of the PT100 plus the lead resistances in the measuring leads. In general, the higher the nominal resistance of the sensor at 0 degrees Celsius, the lower the share of lead resistances on the total resistance. Thus, the temperature measurement when using a PT1000 is not as strongly influenced by the lead resistances as when using a PT100. With a PT100, the temperature measurement is falsified by about 0.5 degrees Celsius per meter of measuring lead. With a PT1000, the value is 10 times lower, 0.05 degrees Celsius per meter. The lead resistances can be compensated by four-wire sensing, which is then called four-terminal sensing. In this case, the current source and voltage measurement are separated from each other. This means that the voltage is no longer measured directly at the current source, where voltages across the leads would also be measured, but directly at the sensing resistor. This means that four wires are required. Two for the power supply to generate the constant current and two more for measuring the voltage. With the known constant current of the power supply unit and the measured voltage directly across the PT100, the resistance can now be determined from Ohm's law without lead resistances influencing the result. However, such a calculation is only correct if it is ensured that the entire current of the power supply unit actually flows through the PT100. Therefore, no current may flow through the voltmeter itself. However, this is necessary, as otherwise no voltage could be measured. Therefore, the only solution is to keep the influence as small as possible. For this reason, very high resistance voltmeters are used for measuring the voltage, through which only a negligible fraction of the current flows, only about one ten thousandth. In this case, the lead resistances of the voltage measurement can then also be neglected, since only a negligibly small current flows through them and hardly falsifies the measurement. In general, for terminal sensing is much more complex and thus more expensive than two-terminal sensing. 
For this reason, two-wire sensing is usually used in practice as long as no high measurement accuracies are required. Pros and cons of resistance thermometers. In contrast to liquid in-glass thermometers or bimetallic strip thermometers, the electrical signal from resistance thermometers can directly be processed, combined and evaluated with other data. Resistance thermometers are also very robust and cover a wide temperature range from minus 200 degrees Celsius up to plus 800 degrees Celsius with high accuracy at the same time. Depending on the application, however, the relatively large delay time of resistance thermometers can be a disadvantage, this means that resistance thermometers require some time until they have adapted to the temperature to be measured. Thermocouples offer significantly shorter delay times. We will go into more detail about these temperature measurement devices in another video. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.